in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Let us sit on the altar. As we come to worship God, let us see his help and also admit how unprepared we have been. We say to her, Almighty God, as we all heart so open, all the desires we know, and from whom no secrets are hidden, and friends of thoughts of our hearts, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord. God, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang the law and the prophets. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with God. So the first of the two confessions. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour, in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past. And grant that we may serve you in the newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, forgive us all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sin, confirm and strengthen you in all good and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We stand to save the Lord. Glory to God in the house, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, the heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you. We give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord of God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Most High. You alone are most high, Jesus Christ, Christ, with the Holy Spirit, Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The collect for all saints. God of holiness, your glory is proclaimed in every age. As we rejoice in the faith of your saints, 
inspire us to follow their example with boldness and joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We sit for our first reading. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew, chapter 5, beginning of verse 1. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you, and utter all kinds of evil against you, falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the gospel of the Lord. By the grace of God may I speak in the name of God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please sit. What does the future hold? That's difficult, isn't it, to know. Twelve months ago, things were much more routine, and you could have said that 2020 will be about Brexit, the Olympics, and the Euros. But how things 
hath shown. When so much of what we do is determined by our age group, and until Thursday, the tier we are in, if you are in work, you're only as good as your internet connection. Number of people who have disappeared during meetings is quite stunning. <laughs> Many have not seen family for months, maybe getting on for a year by Christmas. And Christmas, as our culture knows it, is increasingly unlikely. No one knows what the future holds, and those that think they know aren't telling us. So enter John. He's on the island of Patmos, who, on writing on his series of visions, has given us the most misunderstood and the least read and probably least preached on book in the New Testament. And so for you, because your guest preacher this morning is going to be preaching on Revelation. John is under house arrest on the island of Patmos. All around the Roman Empire, Christians are being persecuted, slaughtered, legitimately killed on the orders of the state or the state just turning a blind eye to the torture, abuse, and killing of Christians. Just like it's happening today in large waves of Africa, Nigeria, Chad, northern Uganda, eastern Tanzania, eastern Mozambique, eastern Kenya, Somalia, North Korea. Any country that ends in Stalin where Islamists and other extremists are absolutely focused on wiping Christianity from the face of the earth. And in China, churches are closed. No one under 18 is legally allowed to attend anything Christian. Pastors are imprisoned. And Christians are either raped, murdered, or forcibly re-educated. Many suffer homelessness, unemployment, etc., etc. So 40 of us this morning, and St. Mary's warning at two metres distant or in our little bubbles, is absolutely nothing compared to what the majority of Christians are going through today. So what does the future hold? That's the question that John is having answered. He didn't ask the question, but he's being told we use some we to a ribbon of life, of birth, of death. We see it in nature all the time. And if you're watching Autumn Watch like me, you get quite excited, don't you? With badgers and red squirrels and the seals and all the other things they're showing on their webcam. And we experience it in events, in events as well. We go to birthday parties when we're young, wedding when we're adults, and then funerals. And that's the way life works. But it's not the full story of life. Life doesn't end with death. There is life after life, at least for those who follow Christ. This is a life that does not have an end, no more aging, isn't that good to know? No more pandemics, simply eternity in God's presence. It's so hard for John to understand, yet so vital for us to know about. This life on earth is like a preface to a big book. Have you ever read War and Peace? Oh, you're lucky. Um, it's a big book. Just imagine the preface. Or Lord of the Rings? Yeah, something like that. Just the preface. That's what this life on earth is. The preface. The rest is in the main body of the book. You see, on this one page, the preface, no matter how many years we live and know God on earth, it's just the preface. Isn't it exciting that we are all shadows of our future selves? That death is not the end, that COVID is not the end, but what are the implications now for us? I want to talk about living life in the light of eternity. My mum was from County Durham. 
So those of you who are from the true north, on the other side of the Pennines, will know where that is. She was a coal miner's daughter. My granddad, her dad, was a coal miner. I never met him because he died young, because of the consequences of being a coal miner in the days before there was health and safety. He marched as a young man from Jarrow to London. And the pit dominated the village, my parents, my grandparents, my mum and her brother's lives from the day she was born till the day she moved to London for work. Being in a pit village defined and shaped my mum even to her dying day. It shaped her political instinct. She was a member of the Labour Party for most of her life. I say most because I found out when I joined the Naval Reserve that she'd been in the Communist Party. She never told me, but MI5 did. Well, that was an interesting conversation with Mum later that evening. I wonder what defines and shapes you. Is it shipbuilding? Is it being a Barovian or a Warneyite? Is it being a Lancastrian or a Cumbrian? Or is it being a follower, a disciple of Jesus Christ? What shapes you? Are you living life not in the shadow of a coal mine or even what was Vickers Armstrong, Baron Furness, but in the light of eternity? Because that's what Revelation reminds us and inspire, inspires us to do. That's what Jesus taught. There is another kingdom, one that isn't temporary, one that isn't fleeting, one that is eternal. And it is that kingdom that should shape our values, our priorities, the reasons why we do what we do and who we are. And eternal life isn't like, you know, one of those in case of emergency break glass things. I had a friend at Polytechnic who had a, a whiskey bottle behind one and we really tried hard to persuade him there was an emergency. <laughs> you know, eternal life is not an insurance policy and something that starts after we die. Eternal life, this relationship with God, starts now. And we have glimpses of that as we walk with Jesus on earth. Isn't it exciting to know that death isn't the end. The loved ones who walk with Jesus are still walking with Jesus and will continue to walk with Jesus for all time without end. Doesn't that inspire us to tell others about the amazing death-busting, death-beating Jesus? Doesn't that reassure us that while dying with COVID is awful, dying without Jesus is a tragedy? Doesn't that give us hope that even in these dark times, that there's a better place, a better way, a forever home where the sun never sets and where we never age? And doesn't that inspire us to tell our friends and neighbours about this Jesus? As to why we have hope, why even in these darkest of times we trust in God, As we go back into lockdown from Thursday, don't let that lockdown you. In terms of what shapes you, let it be God and his kingdom. What excites you, let that be knowing Jesus. And share that with those around you. You know, you can do alphas online, you're doing one in Kendall online. You can share the faith over the phone with friends. You can pray for friends. Um, Maureen said we need to pray big prayers. Is that correct, Maureen? Yeah, so pray those big prayers. Pray for Barrow. Pray for people to experience and know God's kingdom. Pray for them to know this life after life. And may this God of eternity shape each and every one of us.
in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We stand to declare our faith in the words of the Lord. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, because of God's name, of one being with the Father, through whom all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified at the conscious pile. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in the corners of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. Who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please sit on the altar. Pray for those refugees, that they would find comfort and love. 
and so might to start a new life away from the violence. God of love, hear yeah. our prayer. <coughs> Jesus said, They are blessed who hunger and thirst after justice, for they will be satisfied. Father, we ask that you would bless those who work to help people who are in need. We pray for the work of the food bank in Barrow, for the street angels, for the clothes bank, for all our churches who are helping the lonely and isolated those who need an ear to listen, and those who struggle financially. Father, we pray that when we see injustice, we would become your ears, eyes, hands and feet, and not turn away. God of love, hear yeah. our prayer. Jesus said, they are blessed who show mercy to others, for God will show mercy to them. Father, we pray for those who have hurt us in the past. We ask that you would heal our broken hearts and memories. Every week we say, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. But do we really? Help us, Lord, to be keepers of our words and to see others as you would see them, to look at them through your eyes of love. God of love, hear yeah. our prayer. Jesus said they are blessed whose thoughts are pure, for they will see God. Father, we ask that you would help us to live, not as the world does, but as you ask us to. Help us to be different, to live in your resurrection power and with the help of the Holy Spirit. Help us to be open to the Spirit's work in our hearts, to be strong and courageous. We pray that we would live as children of God in an ungodly world. We pray that when people look at us, they would see you. God of love, hear yeah. our prayer. Jesus said, they are blessed who work for peace, for they will be called God's children. Father, we ask that you would help us to be peacemakers in our country, our town, and our families. May we bring your love into all our conversations, all our thoughts, and all our words. We pray that we may stop and think before we speak. Father, it seems the normal now to speak negative things about people, to write negative thoughts on social media, to judge people before we know the whole story. Help us to be different, Lord. May we speak positive thoughts into people's lives. God of love, hear yeah. our prayer. <coughs> Jesus said they are blessed who are persecuted for doing good, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to them. Father, make us willing to suffer for the sake of good, rather than to practice injustice. And let us not discriminate against our neighbours, both here and far away. We pray for your courage, strength and power to help us to always do what is right and not shy away from that. God of love, hear yeah. our prayer. Jesus said they are blessed who grieve, for God will comfort them. We pray for all who are ill in body, mind and spirit. May we be your comfort to them in their time of need. We pray particularly for those who are finding the current pandemic a trial too hard, particularly after the additional lockdown announcement last night. We pray for our schools as they continue to try and keep things as normal as possible. We pray for those working in our hospitals, that you would strengthen them and keep them safe. We pray particularly for Debbie the chaplain, as she supports patients, staff and families. We pray for those struggling with poor mental health through anxiousness and worry. We ask that you would speak peace into their hearts and minds. We pray for those key workers in schools, the NHS, shops and other essential businesses who are continuing to work despite the pandemic. We pray for their families from whom some are separated. We pray for those of us who are family living far away and for whom Zoom is now a way of life. We thank you that we can still keep in contact this way. We pray for those who find the lack of physical contact too hard. We ask that you would reach out and touch them with your comforting arms. We pray today particularly for those in our church community who we have not seen for many weeks and for those who need your healing touch. We pray particularly for Wynne Anderson, Ian Barlow, Jean Best, Doc Craig, John Bentley, Michael Ecott, Brian Fenwick, Jeff Coughlin, Sandra Inchley, Sandy Jackson, Jim and Chris Lowry,
Tracy Parkinson, Helen Robinson, Sheila Reynolds, Annabelle Roger, Sharon Salmon, Sheila Shuttleworth, Marjorie Sales, Sheila Watson, Bill Woodall, Alan, Jack, and Anne. And we thank you that Babs Hartley, Reedy Roddy, Betty Bard, and Mary Fletcher are all being looked after in care homes. We pray that they will settle in quickly and get the support they need. We pray for the family and friends of Brenda Crow who has died and whose funeral is this week. We pray for all those who have lost loved ones during the last year, and particularly in these last few months of the pandemic, who have not been able to say goodbye as they would have wished to. Let's just have a moment of silence as we remember them. We pray that your comfort and love would sustain them and that you would begin to heal their wounds of grief. God of love, hear from our prayer. Father, we pray that we would go from this place today surrounded by such, great, such a great cloud of witnesses. We pray that in whatever we do, we will proceed it with hope, accompany it with prayer, and follow it with thanksgiving. We pray that we would see you more clearly love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. I don't know when you normally do your notices, but I'll do them at this point. Thank you for those well thought through prayers. They're lovely. Thank you. Uh, I presume you've all got a notice sheet. So take it away with you. Read, mark, and inwardly digest. And I believe the church warden sends a test out at the end of the week to see how well you remember your notice sheet. So do read it. Keep praying using the prayer diary for the church in Barrow, and are there any other notices I need to give? Please stand. So we go share the peace, and we can't do it in whatever way you normally do it, but as you look around and nod to acknowledge the people around you, to say a prayer for them in your head as well, that God will bless them. So, Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God by his love for us on the cross. We meet in his name and we share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. So, do you <coughs> want to have a sign of peace?
the Spirit is with us. We lift that to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks to the Lord. It is right to praise you. Father, Lord of all creation, in your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread. He gave you thanks. He broke it. He gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, if you do this in remembrance of him, his body is the bread of my heart. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this often, as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Father, if you do this in remembrance of him, his blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising to glory, send your Holy Spirit on this bread and this wine, that they may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink his most holy make us one in Christ our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, at all time, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Lord, 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 Lord,
verse 16 in Acts 32. And we say the second of the two prayers together. Father of God, we give you thanks and our prayers. For the joy you have so far off, you have met us in your Son, and have brought us to heaven. Go 